Welcome to my latest episode. Because a lot of our data is in the cloud and our little dog can't protect our data in the cloud, we need to find alternatives. Microsoft runs one of the largest networks in the world. We have so many offerings and services that we run out of the cloud. Xbox, Skype, Office 365 and obviously Azure. All that entry points and all the people that try to attack us, cybercrime, when we see patterns, there's a lot of intelligence that we do. We have the Digital Crimes Unit, there's the Cyber Defense Operations Centers, and all this knowledge we make available to you through the Azure Security Center. And today I want to quickly give you a demo, an overview of how it looks like. So let's dive in. So here you see a view of the Azure Security Center dashboard. Let me quickly start up the Security Center. Here you see it's pretty much split in two parts. We have prevention on top, everything that has to do with prevention, prevention and detection on the bottom. So you see there is a lot of error mistakes that he right now gives or recommendations he has and alerts at the bottom. But let me quickly show you here for the overview. You can start with filtering on subscription. Many companies have multiple subscription for different departments or however they set up the originally let's say enterprise agreement activation and how they want to deal it. In the security center I can filter to a specific subscription. This can be done here. You see I have only selected the Azure Security Center demo or I could also do the Microsoft Azure internal consumption. Let's go back. Let's click on security policy. Here you see every subscription listed, but because I only filtered on the Azure Security Center demo, we only see this one here. When I now open this, you see all the resource groups. You, the policy that you do at the subscription level is inherited by any resource group in that subscription. However, you can make exclusion. This might make sense because let's say you have a desk environment that you need less of security than maybe in a production environment. So when we quickly click here, then we see that the data collection is on. Now the data collection installs a little agent on Unix, as a Linux systems, but also on the Windows system that collects any security relevant information, events and logs. Then we have storage accounts that store that all that information that is being collected. And here we can set up a storage account for each region where we have deployed resources. So here you see, for example, East US, South Central US and Central US. So these are basically just the storage accounts where all the logs go in. Under prevention policy, we can set up what we all want to monitor and control. So here you see everything is on on. But here you could then basically make, okay, we don't need this for this particular resource group or for this subscription, however you feel fit. So let's close this. Under email notification, you can enter your email address, but also your phone number. You have to specifically activate if you want the security center to send you email. But please note that that contact information you put in here is also what we would use from Microsoft if there is an emergency and we have to reach out to you. So let's close that here. Let's close this here and go back to the overview. So first I want to quickly look at the resource security health. So here we see, for example, virtual machine. When I click on virtual machine, we're going to see a list or all the recommendation he has on a virtual machine point of view. So here, for example, we have all the recommendation listed. So here we see endpoint protection is not installed of two out of seven VMs. When I click on it, it shows me which VMs and it allows me actually to install it right here from the console. And here I could, for example, select either Microsoft anti-malware, but also the deep security agent from Trend Micro. Then, for example, by Microsoft on Windows operating system, we also report some best practices on operating system settings. So when we click here, we see here different findings. I'm just going to click on VM1 Classic. And here, for example, we see that the password must meet a certain complexity, but it does not. Now it shows me the explanation and adjust the memory quota for process. Let's end this. 
Missing system updates. I understand that many, for example, use SCUM or other monitoring system that also help you with the reporting on which machine is up to date or not. This is from a security standpoint of view, let's say for a company that maybe is not using SCUM, but it is super important, right? As far as I know, the Sony hack, one of the big hacks there, has been or was related to a missing patch that was not installed on the server. When you click on the server, it would also give you a detailed view on which of the patches is missing and then the additional information to it. Then we have, for example, here, vulnerability assessment not installed. It again shows me all the machines. I click here on the first one, I can say install. Now it allows me to use Qualys. I can say I use an existing solution that I already set up and configured for my subscription, or I can create a new one right out of here and deploy it. Then when the agent is installed, then I get the information now of the solution that I was able to deploy on this machine. So here we see what Qualys all found. Same applies here. I can drill down and get more information to the vulnerability that has been found. Now when I scroll a little bit down, you see that as on the top part, it's all based on the recommendation and lists how many VMs. This is now based on VM, where it can give me very quickly an overview which VM is doing well or where is there any findings or recommendation that I could follow. Now when we go back into the security center and for example click on networking, then we see that this is the same principle. This is just now for networking resources. It starts with everything that is recommended and not yet installed. Restrict access through internet facing endpoints. So also here it's super easy. It allows you, it explains to you how you can make your environment more secure, which is super important. And for example, here, I could take here, for example, the marketing app and I see I could use here a checkpoint solution or I could create a next generation firewall which will list some of the partner products such as Cisco or Barracuda. So let's go back into the overview and then here at the bottom I see the internet facing endpoints nicely listed, also what is missing and if I have something that I can act to to make it more secure. Let's go back to the top. Now here on the recommendations tile, this is basically where you have it all. I mean, my recommendation would be first go in here because this is just a list of all the recommendations through all the resources you have deployed. Could be SQL databases, could be VMs, could be network resources. Here is just, those are the recommendations, please act on it. So for example, install the endpoint protection or add a web application firewall is similar to what we have seen before. Like when we go through the VM here, it's just directly, these are all the recommendations the security center has right now. So for example, here we could select the Contoso app. I could say I need a web application firewall and it's gonna give me, for example, Barracuda or also the secure Sphere WAF deployment kit from Impreva that I could deploy right of this, out of this recommendation. So let's go back in the overview. Then as you have seen, you can also deploy partner solutions such as F5 or others. And if you deploy them under partner solutions, you're gonna find basically the result and the health indication of all these applications and what they report back. Let's head back to the security center and dive into the security alerts. Now this is now detection. As I mentioned in the beginning, all this vast knowledge that Microsoft has runs in the background and is made available to you. It is super helpful and something that a single company never could come up with because they don't operate on such a global scale. So here we see all the findings, you see them listed. You can obviously sort them by description, date or state, and then you can basically also drill in. So here, for example, we have a successful RDP brute force attack. I can drill in, I see which VM was affected, but I can go even further. Now I see, for example, the remediation steps here, what I need to do. 
I can also click on this very nice report and it actually opens a PDF that is made available to you that, in, uh, that cont uh, contains a lot more detailed information about the brute force attack that was detected in this network. Then let's pick another one. Here was a brute force attack. Suspicious process executed, for example. Here we see it was on VM3. Let's click on it. Here we see that it was Mimikatz exe that was being run. It's a hacker tool that has been executed. And also here you see the remediation steps right away. So you can act on this in intelligence or on this inside. And let's fix another one. Network communication with a malicious machine. Now, how do we know it is a malicious machine? Let's assume, for example, some cyber criminals try to attack Skype and they try to get the credit cards from the users on Skype or Xbox Live. Now, our digital crimes unit sees a pattern or sees that a lot of this traffic is coming from this IP. So we flag this IP as malicious and now we have that insight and we make that insight available to you through the security center to tell you, hey, your server or this resource from your environment is talking to a malicious IP. And also here is the remediation steps, the description, why it has been flagged, etc. What is also interesting is, for example, here, possible outgoing spam activity detected from this resource and so on. So you see, because of the global scale and because Microsoft is investing over a billion and has just been confirmed to continue to make that big investment into security, we have cutting edge technology that helps with machine learning, AI, to actually analyze all the data traffic that is going on around all these different entry points that we have. And then in return, we make this knowledge available to you. So we're pretty sure you don't want to give everybody access to the security center. And that's why we have this nice function here with Power BI. So you can click here, you can create the dashboards. I already done that. Then you could just say, go to your current Power BI dashboard. I opened them already. So here you basically see the subscriptions I have, how much is healthy, how many alerts, etc. But you can also basically drill down in, for example, recommendation analysis where you can see recommendations when it has been found or been put on the list to be a recommendation and how much time has passed since then. This gives you a very easy overview in the dashboard you could, for example, share with the compliance officers or with other departments across your organization that need access to it. But that's not it. It's not just Power BI. We also imagine that many of you already have security systems in place or a dashboard or a monitoring solution that helps you to monitor the overall health or a holistic approach of all the health solutions that you use on premise and also in the cloud. And that's why you have your log integration, which in the end are basically REST APIs through which you can access the alerts and the recommendations that are triggered here and put them up in your dashboard. So you see, thanks to the big investment from Microsoft, you really can improve the overall security and security posture of your organization. And so I hope you found this valuable insight today. I hope it helped you. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. As usual, please keep your feedback coming. I look forward to it. And don't forget to subscribe either on WordPress or on YouTube and thanks for watching and have a great day.